you're not always dealt the best set of cards, it's how you play your hand that counts. Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to this episode of Dawson's World. If you don't know who I am, my name is Dawson Lambert. I am a singer, songwriter, actor, actress, choreographer, storyteller, and author. And now I can say Casey native. I can put that on the list. Bitches live in Kansas City for a year and swear they're Casey strong. Hashtag go Chiefs. <laughs> Yeah, it's been one year since moving to Kansas City, and I want to tell you guys about how I almost didn't make it here. This video is actually inspired by my friends, KLCXKLG. I'll link their video down below in the description. Go watch theirs. Watch mine first, of course. But yeah, if you're interested in this kind of video, keep on watching. I want to rewind this all the way back to the end of 2020 when the can I say that word? When the worldly affairs were going on super heavily in the United States, I decided to move out of my parents' home to Lawrence, Kansas. This move, it wasn't necessarily something that I wanted to do. It wasn't something that I put down on my list. And I was like, oh, goody, like I get to cross this off my list. It was more so I had to move out of necessity. A lot of people ask me like, oh, why did you move? Like, did you move because you wanted to? What was the reason? The reason why I moved partially was because I had to move. The environment that I was in was not nourishing, beneficial to me. Like, think of a plant. Think of my plant in the back there. A plant has to have good soil to grow, right? I felt like the soil conditions were just not right for what I require. I moved from my four bedroom, three bathroom house in Wichita, Kansas to a 400 square foot studio in Lawrence, Kansas with two other people. It was three of us in a shoebox. Work out the math. It wasn't the best situation either, but you're not always dealt the best set of cards. It's how you play your hand that counts. I had my little savings in the bank. I took a chance and I just packed up you know, little stuff that I could fit into the studio apartment, got in my car and I drove to Lawrence. October of 2020, I moved in with my friends in Lawrence, Kansas, and that's when I started my job hunt. Did not have a job lined up. I could not find any jobs in Wichita. Partially the reason why I moved was for the job market. There was no jobs in Wichita that I wanted to work. I just got up and left and I didn't really have a plan. All I knew was I wanted to move. I'm living with two other people who don't necessarily want me to invade their space. Gotta find a job. I can't freeload this, that, and the third, whatever, whatever. I was applying to every everything I could. They were paying like 10 bucks an hour part-time. What am I supposed to do part-time? They were like, you can do another job. What other job is going to allow me to work 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. because I'm literally working 2 to 6 at Ulta. I started looking into healthcare jobs. I started looking into pharmacy tech jobs. No one was hiring. I was kind of freaking out because my savings are dwindling, do not have a job, and I was living on someone else's property. I'm living on borrowed time. Even though I was living in Lawrence, Kansas City, Missouri is 40 minutes to an hour away depending on what part of the city you're in 40 minute drive it can't be that bad i'll just commute to work and then we'll figure things out from there so i was applying left and right i was applying to cvs i was applying to walgreens i was applying to like help desks this that and the third like front desk reception stuff nothing was turning up there was a job listing for a pharmacy technician in lawrence kansas and it paid 18 dollars an hour the job description was we need someone who's not a student because this is a full-time position and we need you there all the time that's me i'm not a student so it was perfect it paid 18 $18 an hour. I could move into Bauer Farms. I was so fixated on Bauer Farms in Lawrence, Kansas. It is an ugly apartment complex. I don't know why, but I was just so fixated on the in-unit washer and dryer. God, please make a way. I was writing down my manifestations. I was using my cinnamon oils. I was like casting spells, trying to move heaven and hell to get this $18 an hour job. And I didn't get it. I was heartbroken. I was disgusted. I had to continue my job search. All through October, I was still job searching, job searching in Lawrence and in Kansas City, and nothing was coming up until I get a phone call from my optometric technician job. We want to interview you for this position. Can you come work this out? This, that, and the third. I was like, hell yeah. So this is like three weeks into October. We interviewed. It was good. Right off the bat, he told me it's 15 an hour. I'll try to negotiate for more on your behalf. Mind you, I had no experience in optometry other than like two months that I worked at in Wichita. Understandable that employer, he couldn't argue his higher ups to get me more because I didn't have that much experience. You were my last resort. I had no other options. I thank you because if I had not gotten that job, I would have went back home to Wichita and that's fucking embarrassing. That's embarrassing to flop. Like I'm going to just be honest, like imagine doing something and then you flop. That's embarrassing. You know, I get a job offer with mileage reimbursement and I've mentioned this before on my channel, this job position, I worked in two locations, one in the Kansas side and then one in the Missouri side. It was a four 
40 minute commute. And then when I went to the Missouri side, it was a 60 minute commute. 40 minutes twice a day, 60 minutes twice a day. This was every other day. Driving home after a long day of work, coming home to a studio apartment with two college girls, like, you understand how that can be very taxing on the menses, okay? All of November, all of December, I spent Christmas and I spent New Year's by myself in that apartment by myself. It was sad because I fell asleep before New Year's and I was woken up because of fireworks. But I had to do what I had to do. January comes, there was a little friction between me and my roommates because obviously, no shade to them, I thank them so much for accommodating me. 400 square foot studio apartment with three people in it? Like, are you insane? The way she phrased it, she just asked, like, hey, when are you moving out? But like, obviously I can read between the lines. She was like, get the fuck out of my house. I was looking for apartments. Most of the apartments that I looked in, in Kansas City, most of them were too expensive, too run down, or the area was just not safe. I was looking for the longest time. I would log into my computer in the morning when I clocked in to work, and then I pulled up my work screen, and then I pulled up a private tab just to apartment search. My coworker was helping me search for apartments. My boss was helping me search for apartments. Even the doctor that I worked under, she was helping me look for apartments too, and everything was too expensive. There is a certain rule. You want to spend 30% of your income before taxes on just your rent. I didn't want to even touch 30%. I want to do less than 30% because that's like a good standard to live by. But it's very hard to do that when you're living in Kansas City. If you live in any metropolis, if you live in any big city, anybody other than like work from home people, you know there will be a commute. I had a manager who did like an hour commute every single day because she, for some reason, she was enslaved to her job. I didn't want to do that. In the area that I was working in on the Kansas side, there was this apartment. It was right in my budget. It was rent controlled. It was perfect. The size was perfect. The windows were perfect. Like fixtures were perfect. Everything was perfect, but there was no availability. I was hounding management to let me know if there was availability. I literally walked in the office without an appointment. I was like, give me this apartment. Like I need it now. And they did not, they could not give me an apartment because they do not have any. And I was running out of options because in the month of January and my roommate is telling me, get the hell out of my house. I was looking to couch surfing at this point. Every single day, I was driving around the city looking for apartments and I would drive past Extended Stay America. It's like a hotel, but like for long-term business travelers or like whatever. That shit gave me PTSD. I honestly thought I was gonna be homeless at one point and seeing that Extended Stay America I thought I was gonna be homeless and I was gonna have to call them and be like, hey girl, I need a room. Like that's so embarrassing. That's so traumatizing. That's scary not knowing where you're gonna sleep at night. It's scary not knowing if you're gonna be able to put a meal on the table, you know? Anytime I see an extended stay America, I get the worst PTSD ever. Between the entire time I started living in Lawrence till when I moved into my actual apartment, I was touring a lot of places. I was looking over on the independence Missouri, like way, which way? Way East Kansas City. I was looking South Kansas City. I was looking North Kansas City. I was like all over the state, not the state. I was all over the map looking for apartments in the city and nothing would come up. I literally went to tour this one apartment. There was like a lock of hair on top of the door and I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna be hexed. I was scared because I didn't wanna go back home. My friend was kicking me out and I didn't wanna be homeless. So I'm just like, what the hell? do I do? Also, my brother brought up this point. He was like, why are you living in Lawrence if you don't go to college? Isn't that weird? Yeah, that is a little bit weird. And I understand not the entire city is a college town. It is a little weird to be surrounded by the people that aren't in your social circles anymore. They're all college students. All my friends are college students and I'm just working. I just felt like that was very weird. October, November, December, January, four long months commuting from Lawrence to Kansas City, 40 minutes every other day, 60 minutes every other day, I found this apartment. It was between both of my workplaces and it was right in my budget. It had all the light fixtures. There's three light fixtures behind me. There's a light fixture in the bedroom with a ceiling fan. There's vanity style lighting on the bathroom. There's a huge closet right over here with a giant mirror on it. It fit every single criteria right in my budget. It had all the fixtures I wanted. It has a huge kitchen, by the way. The location was nice. It's very safe here. It's a very quiet road. It's off of the road off the beaten path. 
two roads diverged and one less taken. You turn off the road and then it opens up into this neighborhood. It's very safe. I feel safe. It's quiet at night. My neighbors are quiet. It was perfect. I literally signed my lease. We can get the apartment ready February 1st. Like, no, I want it now. I signed that shit and I hopped in and then they were like, okay, we'll give it to you, you know? And the other thing I want to mention is that I could not rent because either my income was not like a hundred times the rent I didn't have an 800 credit score. They were asking for co-signers. My sister was offering to co-sign an apartment for me because she understood how the environment that I came from was not nourishing for me to grow. For starters, she's not my mother. She's not my parent. She's not responsible for me. I did not want to hold that over her. That's not fair to her. And then second, I wanted something on my own. I wanted something that I could call my mine loosely. I wanted something that I had my name on the papers. That's what I wanted. I wanted something that I did for myself. Obviously, is it perfect? No, but I learned how to love it. I moved in in January. No shade to any of my friends back home or any of my friends like back home, back home from Garden City. They were saying like, oh, it's so inspirational seeing you move to Kansas City. It's my biggest dream to move to Kansas City. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, okay? If your dream is to move to Kansas City, aim higher. And no shade, no shade, no shade to any of my Kansas City people. I love Kansas City, I love y'all. Understand this, I moved here out of necessity. I've met plenty of people in Kansas City who makes it worth it, so I love you all. No shade to Kansas City at all. I make this video to say, I lost my job. My lease is coming up. I need to act fast because I feel like I'm being chewed up and spit out of the city right now because the way I got fired. So I could either plant my feet and get my shit together and play the cards that I were dealt and figure things out, or I can move back home. Let's think logistically, okay? I do not have a job currently. What if I move to another apartment and then they check my employment and I don't have anything? They did raise my rent and I cried at work because of it, but it was just only 20 bucks. It's, you know, 20 bucks is 20 bucks. It's not the amount, it's the principle. I needed to plant my feet. I needed to jump first and believe that God will catch me because that's honestly what I did. I signed that lease, I'm good for another year. I am jobless right now, but I am Dawson motherfucking Lambert. I am a Kansas City celebrity. I work from home making YouTube videos, TikToks, and Instagram posts, and I get paid $5,000 a week just to be me. People like me for me. So I'm planting my feet in the damn ground, okay? That's my one year in Kansas City. It's been a hell of a ride, but bitch, I'm here to stay. Anyways, if you guys are still watching to this point in the video, put a yellow and red heart in the comments down below because we are Casey Strong. I have plans for you guys. One door closes, another door opens. Jump first and God will catch. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I feel like there's a bigger picture to this. You can't pray for shit and then be scared when all of your prayers start coming true, you know? Anyways, I love you guys so, so much. Literally, after I posted that last video, we jumped five subscribers, so... I love you guys so much. If you guys have any questions or tips or advice for me about living or like getting a new job or like whatever, Kansas City, like if you're a Kansas City native, like check in with me down below. But yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. I love you guys so, so much.